<laughs> While we're talking different levels of facial hair, I got to be completely honest, gentlemen. About an hour and a half ago, I seriously contemplated shaving the sides, going full mustache in honor go. of Doug Eddard for this show. I think if they make the final four, when we go down to NOLA, I may be needing to make a little movement happen within the field of 68. But guys, St. Peter's, the run continues. Shaheen Holloway is a magician. These guys play so hard, so relentless. And T.O., we were saying, you were saying before we jumped on this call, they took Purdue entirely out of what Purdue normally does well. They used it against them to get the victory tonight. T.O., what did you see from that game? I saw the first thing I was concerned about whenever I was watching Purdue go up against the St. Peter's team was how in the world St. Peter's going to be able to guard Zach Eady? And how in the world are they going to be able to guard uh, Travion Williams. Well, they flipped it on his head. A lot of their actions that they used offensively, uh, they took advantage of their speed with Purdue's inability to guard out on the perimeter with the four and the five position at times. And St. Peter's just finds a way to get shots. And another huge thing, guys, they don't turn the ball over. And whenever you have three and four guards at a time that you can really depend on, that matters. And St. Peter's, you got to give them credit. It's not a mistake, guys. It's not a mistake. That's a top 30 defense, according to Kim Pop. It's not a mistake. When you have guys hitting shots and winning every 50-50 ball, that really matters. I, I, Coach, I mean, you've had some good guards in your time. I mean, how, how nice is it to be able to rely on guys like that at the end of games? Well, first of all, you're exactly right. I mean, it's been an incredible story on, on St. Peter's and what they've done and, and, and Coach Holloway. And, and, and they've beaten three really good teams. And two teams, you know, in Kentucky, who a lot of people were saying was a real possibility of winning the national championship. And let's not forget, earlier in the year, everyone, including myself, was saying Purdue was the best team in all of college basketball earlier in the year. So, and Murray State obviously had a great year, but the two of the three they beat were just, you know, I mean, potential national champion, you know, can, you know, title winners. And so you got to give them credit. Uh, they've got, they've got toughness. And, and you know what, and as much as they're Terrence, as they are good uh, defensively, I think they run really good stuff offensively they mm -hmm. and they pull you away from the basket. They're hitting big shots because as much as they guard, um, you know, they still put the ball in the basket and they find a way to, to, to score. And so, you know, it, it's really amazing in, in, in an NC2A tournament situation where it's, you know, your season can abruptly end on a, on a, just a tough night what St. Peter's is doing is, is really incredible. And they'll give North Carolina a run for their money. I mean, that's not going to be an easy out. You think this is just going to be easy. It's not. And so, and as you guys know, as it gets longer in the game and closer to the end, and that score is tight, the, 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 the fans and the, are so the momentum shifts to St. Peter's and the tightness and the pressure goes on the, on, on the team that's favored. And that's what's the incredible dynamic of what you're seeing, you know, live in action as things are going throughout this, throughout this tournament. Yeah. Let's dive into that pressure a little bit more because I, I thought from watching on my couch at home tonight that you could sense a little, just in the body language alone from guys like Jaden Ivey and some other guys on the Purdue team where they tightened up, like some of their shooters, they got a ton of shooters, Stefanovic, uh, all, all the shooters that come off the bench for that team, like you could tell they almost just weren't as comfortable. They weren't shooting with the sniper mentality that I'm so used to seeing from these Purdue teams for the last however long Matt Painter's been at Purdue. T.O., what's it like? Like, can you, as a shooter, especially for you, do you feel like the life gets sucked out of an arena in a game you're supposed to win when all of a sudden you're on the ropes? I think whenever Jaden Ivey's frustrated, I think a lot of it has to do with he feels like, hey, I'm this much better than these guys, and I just can't seem to get it going. And Purdue had a hard time getting open looks, like comfortable open looks, because it seemed like every time Travion Williams got the ball, four bodies were close. Because they not only is that speed effective on offense, but their ability to recover defensively out to shooters, I mean, that quickness helps, guys. And I've said this a, a lot of times before, Coach. I, I coached at the Division II level. The difference between high major and low major, and even high major in Division II, I mean, you're looking at about four inches in height and about 35, 40 pounds. There's still a lot of guys that can play. And whenever you get a lot of guys that can play that are really fast and have that kind of bravado that Shaheen basically puts into his players, right, because they all try to do what he does, like – 
it's it, they couldn't get open looks. Frustration sets in. St. Peter's plays physical. They are small, but they play physical. A guy that I thought played really well, uh, Clarence Rupert, started out shooting the ball well, but he battled his butt off all night long. It's a bunch of tough, hard nosed kids there at St. Peter's. Well, and 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 the other thing, and you make and you and you're right about the the, the size, the, the the height thing. You know, when you from different levels, but as you know, Terrence, I mean, when you're especially in college basketball, because you know take the NBA out of it for a second. If you just look at college basketball, you can win with undersized front court guys. If they have a, like a motor, a competitive edge, they're, they're that fight, that scrap mentality. And, and because, because of the help side rules defensively, um, you know, there's no defensive three seconds. So you can load to the ball. I tell mm-hmm. people all the time, even though the shooting has become so good in college, you're still not there's, you know, in the NBA, there's never not a guy on the floor. That's not a shooter. And if he is, he's an, you know, he's an NBA all-star and he, so he, there's another something else he can do in college. You might have two guys on the floor at times that are, just, that are not great shooters. And so you can really load to the ball and help. Mm-hmm. And so if you are undersized, um, you know, you can still be really good defensively. And, and, and here's the other thing. Two, two last things on that on the on that on that Purdue with the Purdue game. One is, um, you know, and Purdue has two good post players, mm-hmm. but not a lot of teams have those type of post players where you can say, "Go get me the ball," and you know, and go score it. I thought you actually thought last night with Gonzaga, Drew Timmy, they didn't double him. Arkansas, they let him score one on one, and they and they took the three point shot out and and Gonzaga was neighbor even though Timmy had a big game stat wise, they never able to get in rhythm, but. I think the big thing in the Purdue St. Peter's game that cost Purdue the game was the start of the second half. They went what five, six, seven minutes without scoring, and that they were up four going into in the ha- into the second half. If Purdue comes out and punches them and makes it like a six zero run or something, they might have just cost St. You know St. Peter's may say this has been a good run, but they allowed St. Peter's to hang around. They didn't score for about six minutes, five, six minutes. So they got their, they missed like their first eight or nine shots in, in the second half. And that allowed St. Peter's to get their confidence going and hang around, get the lead. And then mm-hmm. it became a back and forth game. And it's usually the opposite too. Like coming from a big 10 fan who all year has been skeptical of what Purdue could do in the tournament because of their defense. Like I figured they let a team hang around because they just keep giving up bucket after bucket. Kind of, they let, Chris Beard's Texas team sort of just chip and chip and chip back into that game. Not the case tonight. Like St. Peter's did enough offensively, but it's not like St. Peter's was coming down and running and gunning and getting wide open looks every time. St. Peter's really made it tough for the best offensive team in the country in a way I don't think anybody really expected. I have to ask this and I don't even, I'm sick of my stomach that I'm even asking it, but the big 10 fans are going to want me to. What does this mean for Matt Painter? Okay, this is his most talented team that he's ever had. They caught some breaks in this tournament, catching a 15 seed in the Sweet 16. A guy who has not made a Final Four at Purdue. Obviously, tournament runs are a very, very subjective thing to evaluate how good a coach really is. But Josh, what do you, what do you make of this? Is it fair to evaluate him negatively because of results like this? Well, look, I mean, I, I think Coach Painter is one of the best in the business. He and and and. Um, I mean, he's as good as there is in the entire country. And you look at the success that his program has had for so long, just constant, constant success. And you guys know, get the tournament is, I mean, yes, you have to be, first of all, you have to be really good to get there over the longevity of the season. But then once you get there, uh, there's a lot of breaks that have to go your way. And sometimes yeah. it just, and, and for example, for coach Painter to get to the final four, cause he's made multiple sweet 16s there's been a couple breaks that just have not gone their way. You look at the Virginia game a few years ago, Virginia probably should not have won the national championship. Purdue should have won that game. If you remember that, I mean, off that free throw box out, the ball got kicked out and the one kid hit the shot. And so, um, you know, they've just had some things that have not gone their way and the same thing tonight, some things did not go their way. Look, I get it. we're, We're all in this, and all the, the, the marketing and the commercials and the ads, it doesn't say road to the conference championship. It says road to the final four. And, and that's where the focus is. And, for, and, and, and so when you get to multiple tournaments, 
people then expect you to get to the final four eventually. When you don't go to the tournament, you know, for then they expect you at least to get to the tournament. I mean, it's just, that's just a cycle that we're in. I think coach Painter is one of the best in the entire country. He's the most, one of the most consistent coaches. Their teams are so well coached. I thought they were the best team in America earlier in the year. I just think it's so hard to advance and to win and to get to the final four. I mean, I mean, Gonzaga is a prime example. I mean, how good have they been over this stretch one, but they haven't won a national championship. It's just so hard to do as great as coach K is. I mean, he has five of them and which is amazing, but he's only five. If you think about only five and, you know, and, and when you say only five, I mean, that's an incredible amount. It's just very, very hard to do. And I think that's where, that, and, and you know what, but that's what makes college basketball and that's what makes sports great is the fans wanting more and more. And that's why that's what makes the, 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 the excitement of it all as well. I love paint. I, I just want to say that first and foremost, I think like an offensive genius. Sure. But when he, like, I, I can understand also some apprehension from a fan's perspective and, and Josh, I'm just going to say it because like, I, I'm not a coach anymore. So I feel like I can be a little bit more off the cuff. I could see why people were disappointed. This team had all the tools. They had shooting on the perimeter. They had an elite athlete in Jaden Ivey. They had big guys that nobody could hang with, but it just seemed like it just didn't come together for some reason this year. And this team, even though they had mega size, they were, they had some defensive liabilities and you saw those tonight, like that big size. It, we've moved a lot to small ball these days, like the big tens kind of a, it's, it's in a, it's in by itself because a lot of other conferences play a different way. The aircraft carrier belongs to the big 10. So that makes it different, but uh, is it conducive to to winning in the NCAA tournament, having that one big guy? A lot of people are taking advantage of that. It's just defensively, this team had a, a lot of issues. And moving forward, I mean, this is the worst defense he's had since 2015, according to Kim Palm. And with these kind of athletes that he'd had all over the floor, you would expect them to be a little bit better. Is this a disappointment? I would say it's close because coming into the season, I think everybody thought Final Four. I think everybody thought for sure Elite Eight. Uh, defensively, they just couldn't get it together, and you couldn't get full buy-in from Jaden Ivey on that end of the floor for some reason. Yeah, and I think from the fans' perspective, they tell you zero banners hung this year. No conference regular season title, no conference tournament title. Decent number of breaks in the tournament with who you play. Doesn't shake out. I'm honestly surprised this team was incredibly fun to watch. Uh, but as you said, Josh, that's what makes college basketball – both a cutthroat thing and a beautiful thing because hey, coach, I just want you to know there. too. I just want you to know too. Greg's a huge Michigan guy. Oh, so gosh. I do. I, it, so it's important that we point this out. He's a huge Michigan guy. Hey, we were going to, we were going to say that to you. Okay. I'm still in mourning. <laughs> okay? I'm putting a happy face on, but here we are. Well, and, and, and even for like a team like Michigan, I mean, look, I mean, they, they, you know, of course they had this stuff earlier in the later part of the regular season, but they were, you know, I'm sure, Greg, you know, you're sitting there going to selection Sunday. Are they even going to be in because they lose to Indiana and, and then they get in and they were down to Colorado state. They beat Colorado state. And you guys know, Tennessee, everyone going in, including myself, I thought they were under seeded. I mean, they should have been a higher seed and all of a sudden they played Michigan. They lose. And, you know, and Michigan played well for the most part yesterday and they missed some free throws obviously. But again, that's what you just don't know how things are going to be moving in the, tournament and that's really what makes because you're dealing with 18 to 23 year olds you just yeah. in a one game scenario that it just makes it so darn hard to to to, to even get to the tournament and then even to win and keep advancing